Now at 11, flooding shuts down a major Oregon highway and forces rescues as drivers try to plow their way through the high water. Plus, we, we do what we do every day. We see some bad things every day. So for something like this to happen, we found a lot of relief in the humor. The burglary call that ended with local sheriff's deputies cracking up. Also, a strange phenomenon caught on camera in Seattle, a power pole. You saw that come crashing down. It was one of two dozen that fell. This is KGW News at 11. First tonight, it is a medical marvel. A Malala woman's body was essentially backwards inside, but it wasn't discovered until after she died. Thank you for joining us. I'm Laurel Porter and I'm Dan Haggerty. This is simply remarkable. Maybe the most remarkable part of it is that she way outlived the life expectancy for someone with her condition all the way to the age of 99. Three and KGW's Lindsay Nadrich spoke to this woman's daughter and some doctors about this remarkable story. Yeah, very unique case and Rosemary Bentley donated her body to science after she died. So it was students and doctors at OHSU who made this fascinating discovery. Well, my mom was really a neat lady. But it wasn't until recently. This was one of the last pictures. I that think Ginger that Robbins knew just how neat her mom, Rosemarie Bentley. Isn't that amazing? Truly was. Yeah. Rosemarie was born in 1918 in Waldport, Oregon. And she graduated from beauty school. <laughs> and a mother to five children and a grandmother to many grandchildren. She lived to be 99, which is a feat for anyone. But it's especially impressive for someone like her. They told us most people didn't live past five that had this. When she died, Rosemarie donated her body to science. So last spring at OHSU, students and professors inadvertently discovered her rare condition. This condition is called situs inversus, and there are a couple of different forms. That it's really kind of like a, uh, everything in her in her chest cavity and when her in her body. It's like reverse, like a mirror. Most of her vital organs were yeah, not where they were supposed to be, which you think someone would have discovered when she had her gallbladder removed. But she lived her whole life not knowing her stomach and spleen were on the right when they should have been on the left. Her liver was also more on the left when normally it's more on the right. Her intestines were inverted and her heart was pointed the opposite way. Most people with this have heart defects that cause them to die early, but not Rosemarie, making her the longest living person with this condition. It's the first case I've seen. It may be the only case that I see. And that's most of the pictures. Her family thinks she would have loved to know just how unique she was. <laughs> Yeah. and probably yeah. would have thought it was funny. They say it's something her husband would have joked about, too. Oh, my gosh, he would have been unmerciful to her about this. He, he was. He had a, a real dry sense of humor, but he would have teased her to death about it. Well, one of the doctors at OHSU who discovered this said there is a genetic component to the condition, but he's now working to learn more about what causes it. Rosemary's kids now plan to also donate their bodies to science, and they initially thought, oh, what if I have this condition too? But they don't think they do, so. I mean, she had her gallbladder removed. She had five babies and still no one ever discovered yeah, no this. No one discovered it. It's no one crazy. said anything. She had no idea, lived a long, normal life. We're so glad yeah. Rosemary had a full life. Thank you, Lindsay. Appreciate it. So we want to talk about this weather flooding tonight, causing problems, still an issue right now from Portland down to Cottage Dro Grove. And we got to look at some of the high water in Albany today with our drone Fly 8. This is a swamped ballpark near the Willamette River. The water is expected to start going down on Friday. It's unclear how long it will take to dry out these ball fields under all that water and get them to a place where the games can begin again. It looks like it's going to be a while. Uh, in Corvallis, high water shutting down Highway 34. Close right at the Highway 20 intersection. Loads of uh, lanes have been closed off uh, on and off today, creating some big backups through that area. Tonight, though, the water's risen even higher, forcing ODOT to close the entire road. ODOT says traffic is going to be detoured until the water goes back down. I feel uh, kind of stupid because it's my fault. Philip Schultz says he learned his lesson after he got stuck. You see it floodwaters today in Junction City. That's in Lane County. Firefighters had to save him from his truck. He says he's seen flooding in that area before and he thought he could drive through it. Firefighters say they've been rescuing at least one person a day since the flooding began. And that was just one of several rescues around the area. Marion County Sheriff's deputies had to rescue this driver who went around a closure on River Road South today. Even bigger vehicles aren't safe from high water. 
The Benton County Sheriff's Rescue Team had to help this dump truck driver who got trapped near the city of Monroe. Closer to Portland, the Willamette is running fast. As you can see from the video, it's full of debris. We went out on the water today with Portland Fire and Rescue. They actually first had to move a big log that floated under their boathouse. We also saw crews today clearing logs from the docks in downtown Portland. Logs do occasionally float down the river in spring, but not like this. I am very surprised at how quickly the river has gone up at this time of year. Uh, it isn't uncommon in the winter time to see it rise rapidly. We've had a fairly dry winter in that respect, but the Willamette Valley is so saturated and we've had such heavy rains that it's really bounced the Willamette up very rapidly. NOAA EXPECTS THE WILLAMETTE RIVER IN PORTLAND, WHICH USUALLY HOVERS AROUND 4 FEET ABOVE THE WATER GAUGE, TO RISE UP TO NEARLY 14 FEET BY THURSDAY. IT'S ALREADY FLOODED SOME HOMELESS CAMPS ALONG THE EDGE OF THE RIVER BELOW THE SPRING WATER TRAIL. WE'RE GOING TO CHECK IN WITH CHIEF METEOROLOGIST MATT SAFINO JUST A FEW MINUTES TO SEE HOW THE RAIN THE REST OF THE WEEK COULD IMPACT OUR RIVERS. THIS NEXT STORY STARTED LIKE MANY OTHER CALLS FOR HELP. A person was worried an intruder was in their home. Washington County Sheriff's deputies raced to the scene. They stormed the home, guns drawn. And as KGW's Mike Bennett reports, they'll never forget what they found inside. Burglary in progress. A call for help came from this Washington County home just before 2 o'clock Monday afternoon. They believe someone's inside the bathroom. The bathroom door is locked and they can see a shadow under the door. Dispatch sends us a call that there's a burglary in progress. Deputy Brian Rogers was one of the first on scene. He was met by two guys who were house sitting for their nephew. They'd been out walking their dog and when they came home from walking their dog, when they walked in their house, they said that they heard you know, noises in the house and then a bathroom door close. Fearing that an intruder was inside the bathroom, Rogers and two colleagues suited up. I have uh, what's referred to as a long gun or a rifle out. Um, the detective and the other deputy have their, their duty issued handguns out. As the armed trio moves towards the bathroom, they hear a commotion. It sounded like somebody was trying to get through a window. So I had a deputy post up on the back of the house to make sure suspect couldn't bail out the, the back window of the bathroom and we pushed our way into the bathroom. Inside, they found their suspect, standing three and a half inches tall, about 13 inches wide. Six, six. We can clear the signal too. It is a robot vacuum cleaner. A Roomba robotic vacuum slamming up against a glass shower door. All of us just started laughing. It, we had, I mean, what else can you do? It was, it was funny. No doubt a career first for everyone involved. My phone, my personal phone has been blowing up all day. Not to mention a valuable lesson for everyone else. Always call, and I would say that to anybody. If you have any idea somebody's in your house, absolutely let us come do our job. Even if that someone is a something. I've never taken a Roomba down at gunpoint. And when you do take down a Roomba at gunpoint, your coworkers will certainly have a lot of fun at your expense. In fact, just before our interview this afternoon, a sergeant wheeled out a vacuum and asked Deputy Rogers if he was missing anything. A second coworker texted Rogers a picture of a Roomba with a pistol taped to the top of it. Everyone over at the Washington County Sheriff's Office having fun with this one. And that's all right when everything turned out a-okay. This, <laughs> this is too funny. We're getting story. a kick out of it, too. I guess that intruder gets a clean slate. Uh, after this. Good one. <laughs> Very nice. <laughs> Thank, Thank you, you Mike. Mike. Well, this Clackamas family had a real burglar to deal with, and you can tell why police are calling him the doggy door bandit. He crawled into Bruce and Debbie Holland's house, stealing a few small electronics along with some sentimental jewelry. We have no idea who this person is or why he picked our house out of any other house. You go from the, the perception of being in, in a safe neighborhood and a safe place in your house to trying to now walk the line between overly complacent and not paranoid. Break-in happened a week ago and the suspect is still out there. Take a good look. This is a pretty good picture of his face. If you recognize him, call the Clackamas County Sheriff's Office. A missing persons case out of Camas has turned into a murder investigation. We first talked to Chad Holmes's family in February when they were out putting up flyers after he disappeared. On Saturday, police found his body in the Washougal River. Today, they arrested 47-year-old Randy Schmidt for his murder. Now, we don't really know yet the motive behind this whole case. At the time of Holmes' disappearance, we know his family told us that he was last seen on his way to meet a man about buying a storage unit.
In a developing story tonight, thieves took off with a treasured jacket. A Newport woman says it was one of the few things she had to remember her father by. Vicki Roller was staying at the Canopy Hilton in Portland last Friday. She gave her car to the valet, but it was broken into sometime overnight. Thieves took a few random items from the car, but most important to Vicki is her dad's jacket he wore in the Air Force. They discovered it in his things when he passed away. We had never seen it before, and my son Lex, who's 15 now, he put the jacket on, and it just, you know, filled our hearts up, and he asked if we could keep it to, you know, remember his grandpa. And Keep an eye out for the jacket. It has the name tag roller on the right chest. If you see someone wearing it or find it in a thrift store, please call Portland Police. I hope it finds its way home. So check this out. We told you yesterday about the, the power poles falling in Seattle in that area. Wow. Look, I mean, the video is crazy. It shows one of them coming down right on a car, crashes through the windshield. We'll tell you the couple inside suffered some minor injuries and they were trapped for a while, too. This is just one of 26 power poles that collapsed in that area on Friday. Investigators still trying to figure out why they all fell. None were considered outside of their expected lifespan. And check out this huge tree that came down tonight in Salem. It fell across Chemeketa Street near 14th. The tree damaged some power lines and a natural gas line when it fell. Crews had to close the road for several hours while they worked to remove the tree. We don't know yet exactly what caused it to fall. Glad it didn't fall the other direction. Some homes there could have been bad. Uh, next, a close call for a daycare when a crash sends a semi through the front of their building. Plus, the major piece of evidence investigators have released tonight as they try to figure out what started that massive fire at Villebois in Wilsonville. And it's the one thing you might not have in your earthquake kit, but experts say it could be the most important item when it comes to saving your home. And we have some sun breaks, especially east of the Cascades. This is from the Dalles. We'll finish off that sunset for you. And there's been a lot of talk about the rivers that have been flooding, rightfully so, including the Willamette. But we'll take a look at the Columbia as well. Right now, we've got showers moving into the Cascades. There's going to be a whole lot of snow in the Cascades, too. Don't put away the skis just yet.